All right, so we're going over a review of our list from yesterday. The question is, how do I find out whether or not something is in a list? Josh? Did you like pick name and like if Luke, I guess for Luke, yeah, and Susan's, uh, and Frank Drew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can also just do Luke in students, and it will give you a true. Oh, okay. So you don't, in the shell, you don't have to write if something, do something. You can just do the Boolean expression of blank, you know, five greater than six gives me false, five less than six. Right, it gives you that it will tell you whether or not it's true or not. So you don't necessarily have to have if blank is less than this, do this, that sort of thing. So, um, so that's a, a cool little trick. Um, what else? So if I wanted to display every item in this list on a line individually, regardless of how long the list is, how would I do that? You just answered. So do I have to get the random name generator out again? I want to display the these names on a, uh, each on their own line. Uh, you like for, Van? Uh, you can do for x in range uh, length of list. Um, and then print students bracket x minus 1. Well, yeah. Nope. Uh, oh, cause I have I screwed yes, up. Yeah. No one caught that. Jeez. Josh, Luke, wait. Oh. It, it goes backwards, cause you put minus one in there. So if I don't have minus one. Then it's in the right order. Can someone sim oh, yeah. who can simplify that? I'm getting the single name generator pulled up, so Nick, how can I simplify that? Instead of four X in range length of students, print student X, how can I make that simpler? Sure. Oh, maybe you could put for X in range students. Nope. <coughs> nope. Um. Phone of friends gone. Back to you, Nick. You can use your 50 50. <coughs> oh, you can't. What's the other one? You have 50 uh, 50 phone a friend. Or, or you can ask the audience. No, I thought you were doing cash This is. The, you're in the audience. No, that's too difficult. <laughs> uh, do you, so, do you have any idea? All right, JD, you're next. Can, um, I don't know if you do this or not, but can you, can you ask when you say print students in bracket text or whatever? Yeah. Referring, like, with a list, can you use the separate and end things as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, yeah, can you, so. Can you just write print students, comma, and what, or separate backslash n? You can't do separate. You can do n because if there's only one item in here, there's nothing to separate. Right. I guess I just do n backslash n. No. Because it's already doing that. And if you end it with the backslash n, that's that's what this is. Right. All right. Well, no, I'm saying because well, you wanted to, couldn't you just get, can you just do print students like get rid of the for loop and just print the students and then the n. I but if I just. Yeah, but then can you put n in that students? Like, in this one? Yeah. No. I mean, I can, but. Oh, yeah, that's better. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this won't work. Because. Yeah, because just moving it a line after the. It just, yeah. So th this won't work. You can, yeah, you can't separate within the list. You can't separate within the list. You have to actually go into the list and then do stuff. Josh. Uh, to simplify the whole thing, uh, could you do for x and students? 
Yes. But again, what's what I'm sure you guys can figure out what's my criticism of this for loop? Josh, you can't answer it. What? Yep, I would prefer, and you guys would behoove you to put name, not X name, but to actually put name for name in students. And in our video game, one of the things that confuses students a lot is we have, um, I'm going to make a list real quick of lists. Oh, uh, all right. Bad guys is uh, ten comma forty five, one fifty nine comma sixty five, forty three and seventy two or whatever. No, I don't even know what numbers I'm saying at this point. And now this. So these numbers right here are x and y positions on our on our video game grid right do you guys remember how that works in our video game we have our board and the top left corner what, what's the x y position caleb um, with a dot yeah uh, it is quiddity i don't know Okay, so real quick, are you familiar with this in math? This is the x, the coordinate plane? Yeah. What's right here? That's zero. Zero. Like. You, I need x and y for right here. Oh, zero, like. Zero, zero. Yep, zero, zero. <coughs> so, what does this look like? Yeah, I mean, where do you think that is? Zero. Zero what? Yep. <coughs> so our video game is based on the premise that our board, our board video game, starts at zero, zero in the top left corner. And then over here is our max X and max Y, which for our video game is 640 and 480. So all of our bad guys, all of our characters, need to have x and y positions between 0, 640 for x, and 0 and 480. So if it's, say, 100, 100, they'll show up right about here. 200, 200, something like this. Not really, because I can't draw, but you guys get the gist, right? So our bad guys, one sec, Josh. Our bad guys are at 1045, so we're going to have a bad guy that's, like, right here. Then we're going to have a bad guy, 159 and 65, so 159, something like this, right? And then we just have random locations for our bad guys. So our list of bad guys is just like this. All it is is positions, X, Y, in a list of lists. Does that make sense? Okay. What we do in our video game is we then have a four bad guy in bad guys. And then we do a bunch of stuff. So print bad guy so these are the individual positions of bad guy one two three four and five and so in our video game we can then go um, for print bad guy so if we're moving so this is a little this is a little bit of a harder question I didn't expect to go into this but it's a, it's good that we're doing this so if I want my bad guys to move to the left What position needs to change? X or Y? X. 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 Correct. <clears throat> so how do we... I'm sorry, Josh, you had a question. No, I was going to say, so they're practically like coordinates. They're X and Y coordinates. And then Our entire video game is... And once we have the game up and running, I'm going to show you, I'm going to slow it down. And all it is is you can essentially think of pieces of paper being moved, you seeing it, and then moving them slightly, seeing it, moving them slightly, moving them, seeing, you know what I, and then once it's sped up, it looks like smooth, smooth animation. And then can you have as many of those as you want? 
The more you have, the slower your game goes. But how is it like the Don't you to... There's probably modules, but then, like, would you know how to code if all you did no, was I'm import modules? No, I'm not saying modules? you should do that. I'm saying, like, for professional people who are makers. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, most people don't probably don't use Python. Um, fun fact, Python is used, I think, my uncle told me this, um, I think the New York crime city hub uses pythons for their search searches of like people so it they would use python i'm gonna i'm not gonna pick on caleb i'm gonna pick on carter or camden darn it on camden uh he, you would basically type in camden camden and they use python to then search his history like has he been in car accidents has he been does he does he have any known aliases does he have any known <coughs> affiliates with criminals and that sort of stuff um, so I'm pretty sure, I think my uncle told me um, they use Python for that. Um, but then Python's also used in a bunch of other things. But yes, there are more efficient modules and things like that that you can use. For our intro, we just kind of want to, <coughs> this is a pretty simple game. And if yeah, you, yeah, yeah. For us, yeah. Yeah, but no, totally. Um, so how do we, oh, darn it, okay. So how do we take away a little bit of something each time without rewriting the whole variable to be whatever? That's a really bad question. How do we slowly take away from a total? Oh, isn't it like um, the variable, we're gonna be like minus equals one? Yep, that's exactly it. So what is, if bad guy, so if this is our x, y position, bad guy, and we want every bad guy to move with the same speed, which of these two indexes in the list, zero or one, we, would we need to move to have a move left across the screen? Van. Uh, wouldn't we have to move zero? Yep, so we would do bad guy bracket zero minus equal and then whatever this number is, is the speed at which your guy moves across the screen. So in our video game, it's seven. So this is for bad guy in bad guys. That right there confuses a lot of students. Bad guys with the S is the max, is the list of every bad guys. Bad guy is the individual badger running across the screen. And if you would like, actually, you know what? I might, when we do this game, I think I'm gonna change bad guy to badgers. Badger in bad guys. I think that'll help a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of doing that in the years prior. But anyway, so what we can do is we can print bad guy bracket zero minus equal seven. Hopefully that doesn't call. All right, we're just gonna go minus seven for now. And so now, comma, so it's slightly different than what it was up here, but you notice that they're scooting, their, their X position is now smaller, so then it's moving left, leftwards across the screen. So left makes the number smaller, and then right is the number smaller. For X, and then if you're going up, Y gets smaller, and if you're going down, Y gets bigger. Again, it's all just think of it as distance from here. The top left, the further you go, the bigger the numbers get. Okay? All right, so let me actually get to what the book, what we need to cover in the book today. And then I think tomorrow, or I'm sorry, Thursday, we may put some work into our video game. Um, in this, in chapter 88, or page 88, it talks about augmented assignment operators. You got, that's essentially a fancy word for running total, but you can do it with percentages, you can do it with division, you can do it with multi multiplication, that sort of thing. Libby. Can I get the package? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So if you want everything to be 3% bigger, right, annual growth of stocks is 3%. So what we would do is for X in range five years. Oh, I need a stocks 
is a thousand for X in range five stocks times equal point oh five oh print stocks. Hmm. Divide or so you guys notice what's going on? I'm multi I'm not adding to it. I'm getting what's five percent of a thousand, then what's five percent of fifty, then what's five percent of two point five, then five percent of point one two five. Yes, Josh. So since you multiplied it, it's just multiplying it, right? It's mm -hmm. not multiplying it to a decimal. Because if you're multiplying it by a decimal, it'd be like point whatever it is. Well if I want to grow by five percent every year, what does that mean? in math obviously it can't mean this it can't mean I'm just getting 5% so you do like 1.5 times that maybe you add well I think you can just do oops, I think you can just do 1.05 yeah, sorry, 1 oh well stocks is this super small amount so let's start that over there we go now we're actually increasing some money here so you guys notice that by doing that times equal, it's just increasing by um, 5%. Luke, can you put your phone in the box? Thank you. Does that make, don't do that Zeke. That's lame. But does that make sense, right? All I'm doing is I'm growing by 5% as opposed to $5. Right, that's all these augmented assignment operators are, is a way to increase something or decrease by percentage or by a certain amount, that sort of thing. Um, the only ones we really use are uh, plus equal or minus equal. Typically only plus equal. Um, nope, that's not true. With our health, we do minus equal because you start a video game with how much health, Katan? 100, and if you get hit, we need to take away a certain amount but we don't want our health to become that new amount. So we gotta do 100 minus five is 95, not health is now five. So yes, Van. And for like, uh, and for the badger movement, don't we also do uh, bad, bad guy zero minus equals? Yep, we're gonna do that too. Um, so we've gone over the index method. Do you guys have any questions on what that does and how that works? Or do you want a brief review? Oh, you got the book, okay. Oh, what were you thinking of? I thought you were on your phone, but I saw the book. Um, so the index, so the index method. What does that do? Who remembers? The method. Yes. Oh. It does not take away nor add. It tells you where I am, where it is. So I would do students. Dot index of Luke. Luke, can you tell me what this what this is going to show up? But once I hit enter, what pops up? Um, Not your name. Position. What? Position Which is going to be what number? Zero. Perfecto. Yeah. So again, when you have two lists that are matched. So if I also had a list of wages and Luke's wage is the same, Luke's name in the first list, the index is the same as the second list. I can match those and have Luke's wage is blank based on my second list. Um, so real quick, where's a pen? Oh, there we go. It's on the same page. So now let's say again, I want to add, all right, so if we stopped at Josh, we need to add Libby. So if I wanted to add something to the end of a list, I use append. You can think of, I had a lot of students forget, like is it dot add? Just remember, up, end, append, adds to the end. So you have end at the end of append, but then also, and I just thought of this. Oh, that is, that's a permanent marker. I do not want to. <laughs> a. 
So here's the N, right, obviously, but then also if you rotate the P's, add N. Oh. Make sense? Okay. I thought that was really good. Jeez. <laughs> I can't tell if that's sarcasm or not, Christine, but I'll take it as not. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> Thank, well, I wouldn't go that far, Josh. Ooh. It was. So if I want to add Libby to the end of students, I would do the name of the list, dot append, and then whatever is in this pr these parentheses is what gets added. So then I would just do Libby. And then when we type in students, Libby's at the end of the list. Could you make it add it to a different part of the list? Like could you put like yes. zero to index or something? That's literally the next thing. Oh, okay. Like good job. Yes, Z. Um, you have to go into it and print each individual item. So yeah, you could do for name in students print name and is like that. You'd have to do a little thing like this. <laughs> then to answer Christine's question, well, what if Libby, what if I'm doing my, what if I have a list and I need Christine's name to go to the front for whatever reason because her wage or whatever What I would do is I would again do students again Do you guys remember that what a method is as opposed to a function a Method is a type of function that has to have something before it it is called upon and it directly affects something else so Right now we have students as a list, and then if I have period, and then it's insert. Insert is a function that doesn't work unless it's called upon to do something on a variable. So if I just have insert, it's not gonna work, right? It's gonna say it's not defined because it's not a function that you've created, but as soon as we put it at the end of a list, it'll work. So it's just, it's a specific type of function that has to be called upon with a variable to work on so insert we need two things what things do you think we need Katan position. position which is going if we want to put Christine at the beginning what do we need what, what does it need to be zero. zero and then we're adding Christine now if we look at students boom Christine is at, at the front and well Libby's at the end but does that make sense <coughs> So if you wanted to say like add a name to a list or whatever, and going back to like the New York Police Department, or whatever, someone like committed a crime or whatever, you mm -hmm. need to add them to the database. What all you need to do is be like criminals equals uh like input parentheses student append parentheses. Yes and no. Um. Because the database is going to have a lot more information than what can be contained in a list, um, like your phone book and your phone, you have a lot of information per one person, right? And is all the information for every person in your phone book the exact same? Like, do you have an email for everyone? Do you have a home phone for everyone? Some people you just have an email, no cell phone. Some people you have just a cell phone, no email. Some people you have just the address. So all that information is different. So that would be stored in a different way. And we won't necessarily cover it because I, again, I wanna make sure you guys have plenty of time for your final, uh, but in what's called a dictionary, which you have a keyword, you know, Camden, or yeah, Camden. Camden's in your phone. And then you have a list, or you could have a list with a bunch of variables and inside that list have another list and that would have his phone number his email and you could do it like that so that database has a lot more information and it's more complexly written but essentially yeah if they were using just lists if they had a list of every criminal in new york and you committed a crime and they're like all right we're going to add carter to this list boom Car you know criminals dot append carter um now, lastly, not lastly, um, if I want to remove a name in a list, but I don't necessarily want to delete the index. 
Now, the reason why you have two different ways to remove I, uh, either something with its index or with its um, by the actual value, if I don't know what the actual value is, but I know I want to get rid of the first thing, doesn't matter, doesn't care what it is, I would use the delete function. Delete and then index of that item. If I want to remove a specific name, for example, I could do name is input um let's see Josh Mariotti what name do we want to delete um you delete mine Josh oh hang on I got to Josh so now I can do uh students dot remove name And now as you can see, Josh is no longer there. So you could ask, hey, what do you want to delete? <coughs> Whatever. This is his name. Yes, Josh. Was that kind of like in a game where you go into like a function, you like, not a function, but you go into settings, you want to delete uh, an account or something like that? Mm -hmm. You can just go into it and then Yeah, and then again, with lists, this is not as complex as it is in the video game. They're probably using something more like a dictionary, but you would delete the dictionary and it would delete all the information. You basically have a keyword, you delete that keyword, all the information gets deleted. So yeah, very similar. Wait, so does it delete the index though? So it does it, so does it delete the in index along with the reading array? No, because the index is there regardless. So does it still have an index of whatever it had? No. Or does it change the index? both so the overall number of items in the list is changed it was one two three four five six seven eight it was eight so that had an index of zero to seven it is now there are now seven items in this list so the index is now zero to six but Josh's name was index seven. Oh wait no zero one two three four five six he was index six Index six still exists in this list. Wow. Index six still exists in this list. That's hard to say. So the that index is still there, but it's a different value. Now, what if so I'm gonna put Josh back in here real quick. Um students.add. Yeah, so how do I well here let's have Using the insert method, Libby, how do we put Josh back into this list? Students dot insert. <clears throat> Wait, do you want him back where he was? I want him back where he was, yeah. Um, so six, and then Josh in the string. Cool. So now if I have wages is, and again, this is just going to be... All right, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 19. All right, so that's everyone's dollar per hour, right? <laughs> Libby's like making 19 bucks an hour, yeah. Um, so if I want Josh, I need to get rid of Josh because you know the code is saying, hey, we're an employee management function. We need to make sure our list of employees is up to date and we need to remove Josh. But we also need to make sure that we remove his wages because if we don't, then if we do, a, if we do our math, we're actually spending more money than we should be on our payroll. So if I delete Josh, like I did up here, I would also have to delete Christine, Luke, Matthew, JD, Nick, Katan, John. I could have done the other way. I also have to delete this 18. But I don't know what the who the user is going to type in to delete. So this is where delete would come in handy as opposed to remove. So now I'm going to put these, I'm going to put some stuff together. What you looking at, Josh? Nothing. Nothing? What are you doing, Micaiah? He's doing nothing. All right, all right, all right. Just make sure. I got to keep you guys accountable. Um, so I, I need to delete this 18. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a couple of our list functions that we've learned together to make sure that I delete the 18 or the index of whatever someone types in. So if they type in name, I'm going to need to find the index of what they've typed in. So I'm going to go so I'm going to go position is students dot index of name and that's going to give me six so now i know that his position in the list his index is six so the index of his wages is also six because that's how we've coded our code or coded our program so i also now not a, yes josh so it's tap, or we just took what the user put in for name and then when you put it there it just told you where it was at yep okay. yeah it's super cool so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wage I'm going to go delete wages bracket position and then I'm going to remove oops students dot remove name. So now when I do students and wages both Josh Josh is no longer an employee at our company sorry dude moved on to bigger better things and now we're also not keeping track of his payroll. So that right there is very, very like for a quiz or a test that will probably something like that will be on, will be on it, right? The ability to have two lists and use, remove, delete, index, find all that sort of stuff together in order to manage that list. Do you guys have any questions on how I did that or what I was doing or the logic behind it? I'll make sure that this code, the, the, the shell, is available online so you guys can go through it with the video uh, if you would like and then also today I'll come up with some um, I'll come up with some practice problems last thing I want to go over before the end of the class is sorting now you would think well wages is already sorted so wages dot sort no, no change but if we do students dot sort sorts it alphabetically now notice this is something they changed from 2.7 not that any of you guys are using 2.7 or whatever but students is now permanently sorted right it was Christine, Luke, Matthew, JD. Now it's Christine, JD, Katan, Libby. You can't go back. So if you are sorting something, what I would do is. I'm guessing it sorts off alphabetically. Yep. Does it change the indexes? It changes, yes. So in this in this in this list, what is students index index one? Luke. Luke. What is list what is students index one here? That index still exists, it just has a different value. So uh, so let's copy that. So what you would want to do, if you're ever thinking of using sort, what I would do, students underscore sorted equals students dot sort. So now students is still Christine, JD, Katan, Libby. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Christine, Luke, Matthew, JD. Okay, that's what it should be. Uh oh, did I screw up? I screwed it up. So, if you use sort on a list, that list stays sorted forever. Even if you try to do it like this, where this variable equals a sorted version, it doesn't work that way. Sort sorts the list. So, to fix that, what I would do is again, I'm going to make students equal this. I would have students sorted equal students brackets students sorted. So now that equals the same values and then I would do So I have my sorted students up here 
and I have my non-sorted students here. It's a little complex, a little confusing, a little like, oh my gosh, it's a lot of information, a lot of steps. Yes, I agree, but we'll go over that. We have about a minute left, so um, Josh. So what did the colon do when you had students? So this is list slicing, and I just basically, instead of slicing a part of the list, I sliced the whole thing. Okay. Um, all right, that's it. I'll put some practice questions online. Um,